Richland offers a remarkable combination of city services and natural amenities that contribute to the high quality of life our residents treasure. Our city staff is dedicated to providing and protecting that high quality of life for you. Richland has enacted codes and ordinances to govern our community's safety, health, and nuisance concerns. In 1998, a local relationship between Richland, Pasco, Kennewick, and the Tri-City Animal Shelter was established to provide animal control services for each city, named the Animal Control Authority. Prior to that time, we received services from the Humane Society, and the three cities determined that they wanted to kind of take control of the animal control services, so we developed that relationship and have continued that through today. The idea in mind with, through this agency is to be have consistency as best we can of the various ordinances that we have that regulate our animal control. Under contract, the City of Richland receives 40 hours a week of animal control service from the Tri-City Animal Shelter's animal control officers. Please call the animal shelter at 545-3740 to report a troublesome animal, a pet owner violating any animal ordinance, or if your pet is missing. The only animal complaint not handled by the animal shelter pertains to barking dogs. This is handled by the city attorney's office by calling 942-7382 or by calling the non-emergency line at 628-0333. There's a good girl. The city of Richland requires all dogs and cats seven months old and older to be licensed. Residents can go license their pet at Richland City Hall, located at 505 Swift Boulevard. When you go to license your pet, you must bring with you your animal's vaccination history, showing they are up to date with their rabies shot. We do have a different fee structure uh, for your pet. Uh, if it's altered animal, it's $10. If it's an altered animal, uh, then it's $45. And the reason for that is to hopefully uh, have the pet owner recognize, you know, obviously there's a lesser cost to license your animal if it's altered. And at the same time, by doing so, certainly is going to minimize the population over time. One of the benefits of why you want to tag your animals, because if it does get out of your household and it starts roaming the streets and it gets picked up, they know who to call. If you are caught without having your animal correctly licensed, you are subject to a first-time infraction of $66. You must have your dog on a leash no longer than 8 feet in length at all times, or your dog must be at heel no farther than 2 feet from you, under control and able to respond to your commands. Failure to comply with Richland's leash laws comes with a first-time infraction of $66 as well. In addition, Richland has a city parks violation, which is a misdemeanor criminal offense that officers can issue if you are not in compliance with Richland's leash laws while you're on park property. Unlike Pasco and Kennewick, Richland currently has no breed-specific regulations. That issue was discussed by our city council back in late 2006, mm -hmm. and it was a determination by our city council that they did not, did not want to have a breed-specific. Now, having said that, if you know if you do have, let's just say, a pit bull, and it's determined to be dangerous, then there is an ordinance that the city has that would require certain other provisions to come into play in terms of how they retain that animal, and they'd have to have increased insurance, etc. Okay. So, whether it's a pit bull or a dash hound or a cocker spaniel, you know, if it's determined to be dangerous through an assessment by the animal control service, then certainly uh, uh, they would have to follow those requirements. Of the 5,000 dogs currently licensed in Richland, only 18 carry the dangerous dog distinction. It's always been considered a common courtesy for pet owners to properly clean up and dispose of their animal's waste. However, picking up after your animal is more than just a courtesy in Richland. It's the law. Failure to comply with this ordinance comes with a first-time infraction of $66. When we all become good stewards of the laws and ordinances established in our community, we ensure the pet, the pet owner, and the non-pet owner's experiences are as memorable as they can be.